You don't need to be bitten by a spider to become a comic artist, but it does require specific knowledge and skills. Introducing Marvel's The Art of Storytelling, a new online course that will teach you the skills to make comics from start to finish. Join the course today. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How's it going, Ryan? It's going okay, going okay. It's been a busy morning, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it has. Yeah, yeah. it's been extremely busy. That's how that goes. Um, so today we're brought we're brought together because of the imminent launch of the Proco Marvel Drawing Course, which you're an instructor in. Mm, yes. Yeah. So we're getting I love we're, this. Oh, good. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Well, we're here to just take some questions from you guys about the course. Um, any specific questions for Ryan about his section in particular? Um, right now, their presale is still going, so that's. Mm. Um, it's a good percentage off on this course. Um, right now, that's going to be proco.com slash Marvel if you guys are interested. Um, I think we're, we'll just jump straight into uh, doing some questions and getting some drawing. But guys, put your questions in there, okay? Not like last time. You guys didn't have good questions. Bring good <laughs> questions. Uh, Ryan, what do you teach in this course? Um, so I teach a little bit uh some some storytelling some just how, how to set up uh panels and and how to execute a, a page and just show like how to uh, basically how to take char characters and place them on a page and make them dynamic at the same time so mm. um yeah just some something i i love doing i love i, I just love drawing comics i'm drawing in gen in general honestly it's just anything so it doesn't no matter you, you like creating whole worlds with your hands. I understand. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. My head, yeah, I, I love creating it from scratch. And I love when someone hands me a script and says, hey, can you draw this? I'm like, sure. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, I guess we do, we do have some general questions to ask, uh, just besides the ones that people will drop in here. Mm -hmm. But uh, did you want to draw anyone particular as we take these questions? Um, I guess I could warm up with the Hulk, I guess. Just, okay. just to warm up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love drawing the Hulk. Hulk, I, I, this is a true, true uh, story. Um, Hulk was one of my first comics I ever drew when I was, I think I was about maybe seven or eight years old. Mm. Eight, eight, maybe, yeah, I think I was about seven, eight or nine, somewhere in that range. Um, I actually made up an entire Hulk storyline um, and, uh, I remember Bruce Banner was in a lab and he was like mixing stuff. And then he, uh, he, he accidentally spilled it and, and he turned it, it he turned into the Hulk and he was, and he was, some of the, the chemicals on him was stuck on him and, uh, and he was stuck as the Hulk. So the Hulk had to run back and try to mix up some new chemicals and try to, try to, try to get him out of that stage so he can turn back into a human being. So, so you was, did you did Smart Hulk well before Smart, Smart you did then. Yeah, I was I was really young when, when I did this. So yeah. yeah. You should sue. <laughs> you know. Okay. Back in the day. All right. I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and uh switch it so to where we have a different little layout. Um, all right. Spotlight one of these guys. <laughs> Maybe I should draw Hulk John, in a lab, lab coat. <laughs> I mean, I'm, okay, listen, I'm okay with a smart Hulk. John, if you could uh, swap the layout thing around here uh, so that we can have the drawing cam be the main larger cam. I'm going to switch over in the meantime. Hmm. But <clears throat> what exactly was it that you think that young, young Ryan Benjamin loved about the Hulk so much? Um... <sighs> I was really in love with the TV show. Mm. Um, uh, back in the day, I was, I was, um, yeah, I was huge, huge fan of the, the TV show, and I just loved watching Lou Ferrigno, you know, flip out, and that was like the best part for me when he he showed up on the screen and he's like picking up rocks and grabbing people and throwing them around, you know. So that was like the thing for me. Um, and 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 then when you would you see the comic you would you know in my head i'm trying to you know bridge the two you know but i was more into the the real live action show than the comic part of it at the time mm -hmm. and i but i love to draw and this and i wanted to get into 
uh, drawing more. So I remember drawing that. But um, but I, I Hulk in, gen in general, he's just a really cool character. Uh, I love drawing muscles, and I mean, I mean, who doesn't like to draw muscles? You know, I mean, yeah. if, if you think about it, every single super, superhero, it's just a muscle guy in like a a suit. Well, al almost all of them, they're just a muscle guy in like some kind of tight looking suit. So. <laughs> Well, especially like after all these anatomy classes and everything, get the hops given it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, just a quick de demonstration. Um, I always use my red pencil because this is my thinking stages. Uh, I've explained this before in, in previous uh, videos and demonstrations, um, but I always think with with my my red pencil, so I don't have to think again after that. It's so. Meaning, when I'm thinking, I'm thinking of where's the character? Is he going to be standing? Is he turning on this side? Is he turning this way? Is he looking down? Look, he's looking up. What is he doing? And then once I kind of get a sense of it, um, I just jump right right in the pencil. And that this came from years and years of um, I didn't invent it, but it's some, some it's something that um, that I, I know a lot of artists use. Um, but it's really good for when you're laying out comic pages because you have to read a script and you have to do, do, do your layouts and you have to think about it. And I use a red pencil because it's a lot faster. I don't have to erase because mm -hmm. once I have the layout done, it, I just immediately go straight in and start drawing. I don't have to worry about cleaning it up and 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 to, I can literally just start from like the air and just like just peel the character out, you know, from from that point. You know, so it's it's really it's pretty easy in the stage. Okay. Right. So uh, go, go ahead. Are we going to ask uh, some questions? Or? Yeah. So there, a couple people have asked um, questions that are specific to just the course. So while you're doing a little bit of layout, I think I'll answer a couple of those. Okay. Um, so people are asking uh, if they can apply these skills to animation. A lot of those things will apply, especially for storyboarding, um, for th things like layout, uh, panel design, things like that. Um, but it's not specifically a course for animation. If that is something that you're interested in, you should go over something that is specific to that. Uh, exactly. I think you, you can learn a lot from these things. A lot of things, like, they all play into each other, but do a specific one. Yeah. Uh, there's another question here. How does the Marvel course mesh or mesh with the current Proco instruction? Beautifully. <laughs> um, with uh, with all of the instructors, Ryan, Jim Zub, um, Eric Gist, everybody that we worked with for this one, all of those people, we had to actually craft these scripts and topics ahead of time with them since so many of them were flying in. It wasn't something that we can do on the fly. So we got to work with them really closely to make sure that the Proco voice is in there as well as their experience and education as comic professionals. Um, and I think you guys are going to like Ryan's part. Ryan's is very early on in the course. Um, one of the first things that happens is we'll go over storytelling in the course and then uh, storytelling, some scripting, and then we move into penciling, inking, and everything beyond that. So the first person who's drawing things that you see in this course is going to be Ryan Benjamin. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the first question that I think that you can hit in here um, mm -hmm. is going to be a person asking about how to design a comic page for a portfolio. Are there things that you think are specific that they should try to have showcased in there? Um, you want to show a little bit of every, everything. Um, I would, if I was going to design a, uh, a portfolio style or a, a, a comic pages specifically for a portfolio. I would show a little bit of everything. I would show some layouts. I would definitely show some um, some some full pencils. Um, don't just show scribbles. Um, you can, but I would limit it to maybe one, maybe two. I wouldn't do too much of that. Mm -hmm. And. Um, but but you, but the, your strength, the way you really want to show, is more in your storytelling and your in your full page the storytelling. How, how how do you how can you create an entire page and um uh, uh, and and make it readable um, with no dialogue? Don't worry about don't worry about uh, drawing word balloons and, and trying to um, you know write out all the dialogue and everything. Forget about that. You know, just do the pencil part and um and and focus on that. If you want to do inking, then then show show your inks um but that's what i would do um anything other than that it would be just 
some any rough layouts you have, but I would, I would limit that and anything other than that. I would, I would I have I would really extremely put put some limits on on that because you don't want to really show too much of that. Basically, the mindset you want to think is don't show your weakest work. You know, only show your strongest work, and that that will help. So if you did something six years ago, don't show don't show that. Show something that you recently showed that you recently you recently did that's going to be. Um, I like some like I say something within the past six to eight months ago. That's your strength. That's the strongest part out of that. That's what you want to show. <laughs> Don't kill yourself. <laughs> that's that's a good life lesson in general. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's uh, let's hit like a nice basic question for anyone who doesn't know you here. Mm -hmm. What have you done with Marvel that they might have seen before? Ooh, um, what have I done? I, I the first Marvel book I worked on was uh, I, Iron Man. Um, so I did uh, Iron Man: Heroes Reborn. Um, that was when Image and um, Marvel did they did a crossover. Um, that was the first book I worked on. Uh, it was right after Will's Portacio did he i think he did the first issue and then after that i took over and did the rest after that um and then um after that i did uh i worked on cable so i did cable for a while did some a couple issues of cable then i remember working on star wars i did star wars I did a bunch of issues in star wars for that this was when um, you know, Star Wars was under the Marvel branch um, back in the day. Um, uh, no, not Marvel. Am I? Am I? Am I getting it com confused? I think I am getting it confused. But I did do some Star Wars. But but after that, I remember doing some Black Panther, and I did uh, I did do some Captain America back in the day. Um, um, and. I'm blanking out on a couple of the things that I worked on, but yeah, it's been a while. <clears throat> it's been a while. I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, I was I was asked to mute a thing while typing. Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no, you've definitely done a lot, though. I think that it's it's something you, like you stay busy. The fact that oh, we yeah. even got you here to come in for a live stream, I think, means the world. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always, always scribbling, always, always doing some kind of work somewhere. Um, and yeah, it's just true. It's 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 rare that you're gonna get me <laughs> locked into something like this because I'm just too busy all the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, one person was asking if you think a degree matters a lot in this industry, or do you think that you can start just jump in with your skills? Um. <clears throat> In this, in in the comic books industry, as far as on the art side of it, my heart and from what I know from the past, um, from from what history has has, has taught me, um, I would say no. You do not need a degree to mm -hmm. to become a comic artist, um, but it wouldn't hurt um, if you if you have a degree and you decide you want to, you know plug it into into comics it's i, I think it's going to help um but i think where where it's going to help the most is if you have some kind of business type of experience or something like that because that's where it's really going to help with how you're going to craft not just your art but your career your 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 direction um pretty much um who who, who how, how are you going to brand yourself as a specific artist and how are you going to how are you going to maneuver your way through this this uh this this industry and and build something out of it i think that's where it's gonna it's gonna help you the most um as far as art Wait, i look, real quick i know charlie's still there with you can you ask can you ask him to focus on that oh charlie can he actually can you focus on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't oh, oh wow blurry. yeah it actually went got bl went blurry a little bit so yeah, yeah it's not a part that's not my arm it's charlie's arm so <laughs> so 
is magic. <laughs> I, that, like, I can't. Oh, uh, yeah, keep keep going. It looks it's still a little blurry. You guys have seen so, the oh, it's getting worse. Here. It's getting better. Okay, that's good okay, right there. That's good. That's good. Cool. That's good. Choice. Thank you so much, guys. So, um, I do agree. I think, like you were saying, yeah. that having like um a knowledge of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing what you're going to be getting into with contracts, um, yes. who you should be involved with professionally to try to like, like have someone who will chase down yep. jobs for you. I think that's immensely important to consider when you get into the business. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, that's good to also have is if you have uh, like some, someone who can, who can actually, you know, go out and, and literally grab some work and bring it in for you. So that's, if you have like a manager or something, I, that's a, that's a good thing to have. Mm -hmm. um, because I know uh, a lot of artists, they try not, they tend to not think too much on the business side because their mind is so much in the art. They're thinking, Oh, I just want to draw. I just want to draw and draw. But, but if you have a good sense, a good balance of both of how, of the craft itself and how to manage it, you're going to go far in this industry. Absolutely. Mm. So you, you talked a little bit about the things that you had made when you were a kid, um, mm. but like you drew the Hulk and everything and you liked the TV shows, mm -hmm. but what, what was it that actually got you involved in comics? Like what just made you decide to actually go and make comics? Um, when I saw um, Jim Lee's X-Men number one, um that was the thing for me that made me say okay this is what i want to do i want to uh i, I really want to draw i really want to get into comics uh i remember before that happened i was i was into comics um um i was really into um like like uh the the, the tarzan comics back in the day um the archie comics i remember i was really into that um um and then i and I was more like of a of a cartoon guy and I grew up in the 80s as a kid so so Thundercats, He-Man, nice. you know, Silverhawks, th those were like those was like my the 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 the, the fuel that 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 met, that birthed my creativity, you know. Yeah. Um so I remember drawing um a Thundercats comic book when I was in high school I just made up the story and just started drawing a Thundercats comic book back in the day and I just kind of did something out of that um and it was pretty thick it was like maybe this thick on the camera it was, it was pretty pretty thick it was, it was like that thick with two C's <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, <laughs> pretty thick um and they were all drawn in eight and a half by 11 sheets, sheets of paper and this if you stack them th together it was about this thick so it was a pretty long story goodness <laughs> I, just, I just made up and I started drawing on my own and so that was me training myself to Oh, I, I want to draw. I want to draw. I want to draw. You know, I want to draw comics. But I didn't know I wanted to have a. I wanted to build a career out of it until um, uh, my good friend uh, Brett Booth. Um, some people know him. Some people don't. But Brett Booth and I, we were we were in college together. Um, and the last week of school, we were sitting in class, and he was like, "Hey, I'm going to go work for Image Comics and this and that." He was all happy, and he showed me uh, Jim Lee's X Men number one, and I that's when my eyes went, "Whoa, okay, I'm going to draw comics." And I knew from from that moment that's what I was going to do, um, and um, and it was like the, the best thing for me because that that was my that was my, my my way in, and when when I when I got in, I started drawing. Uh, a, a ton of books and then eventually you know I, I jumped around from studio to studio to studio mm -hmm. um working for like multiple studios and, and marvel was one of the studios that i was in so nice so when you sit down to to start a drawing um mm -hmm. the first, so the first thing that you started off with was the red pencil line for your construction yep uh and as you're doing that do you use like classic loomis method techniques or what, what do you think is the place where you started drawing <sighs> Um, okay, so just a real, real quick. Um, what I'm thinking about is this: um, I, the window, the eyes are the, the windows to your soul. The eyes, to me, the eyes set the entire mood for the character. Mm -hmm. So I always start off with the eyes. You know, once I lock down the eyes, what the angle the eyes going to be at? Um, um, you know, where's the, the character looking? Uh, she's looking up down it's it literally sets the mood for everything else um so so 
to me, I, I, I try to lock down the eyes first. And once I have the eyes, I'll, I'll focus on the eyes first like this. All right. Uh, can you move that move oh. the camera a little bit over to the oh. left? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. We changed what, okay. we, what we had there. Okay, so I'll focus on the eye here. And then from, from there, I'll go down to the nose. Then um, sometimes I'll go to the mouth. Sometimes I'll skip the mouth and I'll, I'll like jump straight to the chin. Now, mm -hmm. once I create this little tri triangular type of pattern here, to me, it's just... Okay, I get it. Now I know the air is going to be on the side over here. All I have to do is just connect the air, finish off with the top of the head, and and now I, and then from there I can go ahead and create the brow, and I can create all the different features, all the hair, and anything else I'm going to draw that's in the character. But I try to lock this. This is the framework. This is my train track right here. Mm -hmm. I try to lock this down first. Sometimes I, I'll I'll I won't do the chin. I'll go straight to the mouth, but it's still part of that 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 triangular pattern right here so once i lock that in now i know okay this is the character here this is where the head is this is the the the, the this is the angle the the triangle is facing maybe i could maybe it's facing this way maybe it's fa facing that way maybe it's looking down maybe it's looking up once i lock that that in from there it's just okay i get it i just have to you know put the ears chin and just kind of you know just finish it off so mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty that, that to me that's the framework i use once i once i do that every single time i deal with with with, with male and female characters um and i'll just lock lock it in and just keep working you know so okay so you got that here in this hulk yep. you, you put the the windows to the soul in you got yep. your, your triangle and your jawline yes. yes uh so from here do you think it's um you just expand out from that face then yeah, so so once I have the eyes, um, the mouth. So this is not done right now. It's I'm just a lot of it. Is, I, I work in I work in stages. So I'll do I'll do a scribble stage, and then I'll go in and I'll tighten up any any features that I need to, and then from from that, then I'll go in and tighten it up even more, or I'll modify it to whatever I need to, and then from there, I'll once I have it, it modified, then I'll. Then I can. That's when I'll go in and start adding any shading I need to add. Then I'll tighten up on the shading, um, and and that's basically it. And once I have the, this this flow down, and then from there I'll just kind of cross hatch, you know, wherever mm -hmm. I need to. If I need to cross hatch going in this direction, sure, I'll I'll do that, you know. So that's that's like my process, and that's how I move really fast. And I can knock it out pretty pretty fast. And then anything after that is just cleanup. It's just me. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll go in and let me tweak this eyeball a little bit more. Maybe you know. Oh, I, I don't want. Maybe I want to add a, some a tiny little a highlight here. Maybe I want to you know change this this the crosshatch pattern to go in this direction. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like little things like that. This is where I'm just doing small fine fine tuning uh, parts to it as I'm going. So. Okay. Uh, a per so it looks like a person artist within you. Um, they mm -hmm. asked, "Will character design and dynamic poses also be covered in the course?" I think do you talk a little bit about character design for a moment in yours, outside of even the full section of that, right? I th I think so. I, I don't remember. <laughs> it's, been <a> <laughs> it's, it's been a little bit, but yeah, um, I think in in your section uh, as well as a couple other people sections, um, mm. we had. Um, one of the people that we had in there that was doing character design um, was Sanford Green, I believe. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people who might have seen his recent work all over Spider-Verse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. He was also incredibly busy. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, <laughs> he's a monster himself. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he covers character design in there. I, dynamic posing, I think that one comes in a little bit more during the composition, but it is covered a little bit because it is just part of what you're going to do in composition you need to consider how things play together yeah 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 well character design well in comics right um characters design has some play in in established characters meaning like if you're going to draw captain america's suit or his helmet you know so how how are you going to are you going to stick to one solid thing or how far are you going to push and you, you can't really change the 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 designs or anything like that, but you can like 
tweak your style to to kind of make it more interesting you know mm -hmm. um, so so it's like little things like that you want to do but but if it's a character that's brand new no one has seen before and you have you have a ton tons of room to actually go in and modify it and tweak it then yeah you want to implement a lot a lot more design factors into this and just kind of change it up and you know create this and make it look look like this or that or whatever it is you know mm -hmm. um, but it's um I, I I love it. I I've I've done tons of stuff like that in comics where you know, there there you you get a script and somewhere in the script they're like, hey, uh, this is a brand new character no one has seen before, and we need you to design it on the fly right there. So I have to okay as I'm drawing, I have to quickly design a character as I'm drawing. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, like if, if they have this power set, like, does that mean that they would wear gloves or would they not wear gloves because of the powers, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really, it really depends on, on you and the editor and, you know, because you, you're you not just going to design it and just leave it. You know, you want to design it and um, you, you want to get some form of approval from, from your editor. The editors are the, are, are the, the gateway into, into comics. So you, mm -hmm. you want to be able to, uh, you have to be able to communicate with them and just, uh, be on time. Don't, don't, don't be late. <laughs> Trust me. Don't be late. Uh, you want to, uh, you, I, that's something I pride myself. On. I'm, I don't like being late. I just, I just hate it. I can't stand being late. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, uh, but they're the, they're the gateways. They're, they're the ones you want to communicate with and you want to stay in touch with and, and email all the time or call on the phone and ask questions and just make sure you're on the right track as you're, you're just drawing a page or you're designing something, something. So that's basically it. Yeah. Um, there's a question here. Someone was asking how far can the Marvel lessons take someone uh, and what would be required to go forward? I think I, I feel like you'd agree on this one, right? Mm. They'll take you as far as you want them to. Exactly. <laughs> like it's, they're going to cover pretty much every part of the process for this. You guys, like you and all the other instructors gave tons of information. Mm -hmm. It's up to them if they choose to do anything with this or fully like integrate that into what they do in making art. Yes. Okay. So this is what I say by that. Um, comics is like the breadboard. If you guys are into building computers or, or <laughs> certain circuitry or whatever it's the base of um i would have to say for um like pr production art okay the reason i say that is because it's it's super cheap and super easy to to, to produce it doesn't take that that much time and effort to produce a comic you can produce a comic on your own by yourself um just you coming up with the story i did when i was six seven eight 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 years old so if i could do it then you can do it <laughs> so um oh you, you can come up with a storyline you can pencil it out just like this you can ink it yourself you can color it yourself you can take it to the printer you can get it printed yourself okay that's one that's one way to do it okay but the process of doing this um once you learn and you you have a, a good sense of developing and creating a comic book, you can take that in any direction you want to go throughout the industry. Uh, you can take it towards you know fine arts if you wanted to. You could take it further into the, the the production art you know avenue. You can take it into animation. You can take it into concept design. You can go in like so many different different ways, different areas with this. Um, but once you have it and you understand it, because it teaches you storytelling, it teaches you layout, it teaches you how to draw a hand at multiple angles, it teaches you how to draw facial expressions, and you and you, you you're doing so much. You know, I, I became um, uh, I became a storyboard artist from comic books. I never went to storyboard art school. I never stepped a foot in any any classes uh, on learning how to how to how to how to storyboard for for film or TV. But yet I did it for about eight years, all because I worked in comics and I already I, I learned how to how to build that that side of of, of my artistic skills and how how do you take your skills and not just can you draw an apple, but can you draw an apple falling down 
falling down a cliff, exploding when it lands, then it turns into like, you know, 300 pieces and each piece turns into another, you know, crazy looking piece with legs and they're running around, you know, all these different, you come up with so many different things. Um, <clears throat> so this one, this one saying like, it, you know, comics to me, it's like the base for not just for art, but for like production art and anything. So if you want to start off as in in this field and be become an artist i would recommend start off doing it as a comic book art or artist first because you're gonna you're gonna learn a lot out of that um but you don't have to let's say you want to get into i know a lot of the young guys you you guys are into all the the high tech and the ipads and mm -hmm. all that stuff okay great that's cool um um so you can still take that and, and and you can use you can you can always build yourself as a concept artist and just think of you know cool shapes and cool you know sh sh the way cool cool pro processes of how are you going to color a character or are you can have like a painterly type of feel or you're going to have you know whatever it is <laughs> you can go in that direction that's great but i've seen a lot of artists that went in that direction and they try to go back into storytelling and try to go back into comic books or going that direction and they can't do it because they're great at drawing some certain things but when you actually go into telling a story it's different so that's why i say comics is the way to go because because uh it covers pretty much everything mm -hmm. a little bit of everything a little bit of storytelling a little bit of, of of the the process itself the penciling pro process like you can literally do all this digitally you don't have you don't need a, a pen and pen and pencil and paper to actually do all this you can do this all on the, on 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 an ipad you can do it on a computer you can do it on photoshop you know illustrator you could do it on clip studio there's so many different things you can do on absolutely pro, pro, procreate that's another one you can use um so you can use all these things and just create your own comic and just just have fun that's the number one thing have fun um and just create basically it i agree absolutely well said um there's a person here who's asking if they can do this entire course on paper yes yes you can you can yeah all of it you can do it on anything um during the coloring section of the course what's shown there will be digital uh, for the sake of being able to show what's going to be most common for most people um, but the con the concepts that are discussed in there will apply to coloring traditionally and everything like that it's just them making it with a slightly different tool but all of those mm -hmm. concepts will be the same they'll just use a lasso tool sometimes and you can't really do that with your hands on paper <laughs> you uh, can if you really want to it's true yeah you can go ahead and mask <laughs> something out and then go over it true 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 story i was um i was coloring a book um and it took it takes months to actually you know when you're coloring something and you, you're working on a computer and you're just constantly clicking and using your wacom and you're clicking you know and you, like with your with your keyboard and i did it for for months and months and months and months and then i was done when i was done with the book i'm like okay great i don't have to color anymore i'm gonna go back into drawing with pen, pencil and paper and i caught myself as i'm trying as i'm drawing i'm instead of me erasing i'm trying to hit this <laughs> this control z i'm trying to command z i'm trying to undo with this, with this no 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 i can't i can't undo this i have to erase i'm like oh my brain's <laughs> yeah they, it becomes muscle memory like instead of uh trying to like grab another tool like you reach for a hot key to like, switch between <laughs> brush and eraser yeah 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 it's a problem sometimes i know it's crazy um so you said you had mentioned earlier that you have you, you recommend the idea of having someone that you work with to talk mm -hmm. to publishers, um, chase down jobs for you and maybe chase down payments sometimes. Um, yep. Yep. What if you don't have one of those people, because I'm sure you didn't always. Um, yep. How would you say a person should reach out to try to get those jobs? Like, are there certain <sighs> avenues that you know of people utilizing? Um. It's okay if not. Um, no, 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 no. I, 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 I can't answer that. Um, okay. Probably the best way to to do this is to um go to a, a find a, a comic book con convention, get a table, 
sit at the, you know sit at the table and either do live drawings there or have some kind of product that that, that you're going to sell at the show meaning your own comic book that you've produced and you want to show it off or maybe you want to do this there are some shows that you can show up as a as a student and bring your portfolio and and it's you can see a lot of that you know, where just tons of students walking around showing off their work you know um so there are shows like that but that's probably the best way to do it um uh, i remember back in the day we would have tons of people send art in the mail mm -hmm. and then we would all have to sit there and look at a bunch of art like this is good this is bad this is good this is bad you know kind of like that and and, and figure out okay which artists do we want to we want to bring into our studio and kind of work with us um we have we've had that before uh but now nowadays everything's done you know ele electronically so you can email people but at the same time you have to think about this if you're going to email your work and show it off this way or direct email to someone and blah, 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 they might not see it because ed editors or whoever is in charge to review this they're they're going to see you know fifty thousand emails coming coming in they might not see it so they might there's a, a huge chance but i mean it's a chance you they might see it they might not but mm -hmm. it I, I think you're gonna have a, a be better chance of directly plugging yourself into the industry through shows or which some, something everyone is doing already creating some kind of online profile somewhere mm -hmm. and and advertising yourself and just just promoting your work that way plugging yourself into like different forums different uh so social media apps that's out there and just you know just getting your your face out there getting this is your your artwork is a, is your face that's mm -hmm. basically it. you want to get it out there and let people see it th th that way so that's probably the two best ways to do it is through some form of social media or in person at a at a show that's what Absolutely. i would that, that's that's my opinion now, i'm yeah. sure you ask another artist they might have another opinion so no I, I agree on this completely um yeah go out there every time that you're showing your work um it's a time for you to possibly be showing off your work and yeah. it doesn't always have to be the most polished work ever you can still make a drawing because it's 2 a.m and you're tired and you want to draw yourself looking tired and like farting in a computer chair yeah that's still exposure <laughs> you're still putting something out there that someone will like that will get shown to someone else yeah that's how i that's how i i, I tra transitioned from a comic book artist into a, a storyboard artist on on the ultimate spider-man um because i i did that for about four years and i i was at a show i was at um i was at a show in burbank um and i'm there <laughs> Just doing my my normal comic book stuff and here comes the the the, the director hey uh i would like your work i'm gonna try try out on my tv show i'm like okay great i gave him some some samples next you know i get an email you know and then and, and a phone call and next you know i'm working on the show yeah i mean it's that's how you want to do it you want to you want to show your work off meet people you have to have the gift of gap to actually be able to, to to not just to show your work but you want to be the, the the type of artist that you want to be able to to get along you have to be able to get 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 along with the with the guys who are trying to hire you if you're if some if you're hard to work with then it's going to be really hard for you to 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 keep a job you know they might hire you the first time but they're not going to hire you the second time because they're going to they're going to be like okay yes yeah, this, this person is good but they're they're super late or they're not, they don't follow directions, or it's always some kind of issue like that. Um, and trust me, words, word will spread fast, you know, because oh, yeah, talk to directors, <laughs> they, they all know each other. So the word will spread. And next, you know, be oh, you're gonna work with that guy, that guy, he, he did this and did this, and went back on this. You gotta you gotta be careful. Next thing you know, you're 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 blacklisted and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be careful with that. So yeah. Uh, another person has a question here that I think we can kind of hit two things at the same time with. Um, they had asked, uh, like, do you think that it's possible to make money not doing comics just for like the big three? Um, oh, yeah. uh, like, first, yes. Uh, and second, if you want to try to make money working for the big three, um, you should be making things still. And trying to make money and make comics still. 
um, making comics is the best way to keep making comics. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a, that's an absolute. Yeah. There are, there are ways of, of, of doing that. I, I know uh, I, I've seen too many, too many artists um, working on, on independent projects. Um, you know, there's, there are digital plat- platforms out there that, that you can create a comic and plug, plug your comic into that, that platform also. So, I mean, <clears throat> get, getting to work into Marvel or DC or whoever is out there, the big three, I should say, I, should, I don't want to be specific on any name. <laughs> Too late, I already said it. <laughs> uh, but but it, it, it might be a little bit harder to get in there um, because you have to hit a, a specific, you have to hit that, that, that tier, you know, you have to hit that specific tier. Um, and if you, if you, that's why I say you have to be able to, to, to have the gift of gab, uh, basically sell yourself. You have to have the, a good business mindset behind this because you being an artist is great. It's cool. It's good. Uh, you being you being an artist who can plug yourself into, uh, the, 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 the social medias and the, the, you know, the networks is out there. That's also good. That's another thing. You being an artist who can plug yourself, who, who's good and you can plug yourself into that and also get work and keep it. That's another thing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you have to be able to understand each part of that and try to get it, but you can also bypass all that and just create your own comic book yourself. You know, um, I've done it myself. I, I was doing it when I was seven, eight, nine years old <laughs> when I was drawing the Hulk. But at the time, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, oh, I just want to draw, you know. Um, so I remember doing stuff like that. Um, but it's possible. It's very, very possible for, for you to create your own and do work without having to go to the big three uh, uh, in industries out here or <laughs> companies that's out here. It's very, very possible for that. Yeah. Uh, so here at about 45 minutes into the stream, I want to remind everyone that the thing that brings us here today is the stuff that's in that top corner up there, Proco and Marvel. We made yeah. a course together. Ryan was in it. Ryan helped us make it. Uh, some of the other instructors that we have in there, we've got uh, Aletha Martinez, um, uh, Matt Wilson, the Daniel Warren Johnson, Sanford Green, a bunch of people who all brought their full experience Um, And the things that they've learned as actual practical working professionals in now, they're not just some people who made comics in the 60s or anything like that, (laughs) how to do it now. Those guys were great, but things have changed a little bit. Um, And so the course right now, it starts here just this next week, um, but you can get it for 20% off during the pre-sale window up until that day that it actually starts. So if you guys want to do that, that's proco.com slash marvel. Really, anywhere on any of our socials, you guys have guaranteed seen us talking about it. It is actually really that good. We worked for a long time on this one, so we're excited about it. Yeah, I have to say, I'm I'm I'm, I'm very proud of this one. <laughs> this is one of them. I I'm glad I said yes to to, to this. Um, uh, and I've seen the, the 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 footage from behind the scenes, and I'm I was me myself. I'm like, wow, this this is. This is pretty good. This is crazy. <laughs> it's nice, you know. So, um, yeah, you guys did did a really really good job. Really good job. Thank you. You made it easy. I, I forget. Uh, are you are you on the the panel that we're doing? At yes, Comic-Con? I am. I'm All on right. The panel at at Comic Con, so you guys will be able to see me there and ask questions in person if you're there. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, what what do you want to talk about in where you are in this particular piece? I know that you're you're in a spot where you're adding in some shading, pulling some some forms out. Yeah, I'm just doodling at, at this point. <laughs> I don't know. When do we draw next? I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you want to start a new drawing or I, do, I do you want to I can show how I draw abs <laughs> or maybe? Yeah. Um all right. Let me show you how I would do abs, right? Yeah. Um okay, so this is the Hulk and we must enjoy his abs. Okay, so I know a lot of artists, they like to do this, right? I'm going to show you what not to do, okay? Um, they like to draw every single muscle like this, right? Okay. 
I'm okay if you can ca- if you can if you can do it and do it correctly. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Okay, you like doing that. I'm the type of person I'm sort of sort of like a naturalist a little bit. So I like to see a combination of some extreme side of things and some natural side of things. Meaning like not every single pose the character is just extremely flexed and he's grinning or he has like this ah type of pose every every time he's getting coffee or something to drink and he's just like ah you know kind of like that. He doesn't have to be. He just there are times he could be natural and just, just I just want to drink, you know. So <laughs> so you, your muscles aren't constantly flexed all the time. So you want to be able to draw it somewhere in between where it's you're it you're showing a, some some of it flexing, but it's still natural at the same time. And the way how I, I do that is I try to hide certain things. So instead of me drawing the muscles like this, what I'll do is um, I'll just do impressions. Okay, so I'll I'm gonna I usually well what I always do is I'll just quickly draw like the shape of the character right just quickly get a sh- get the shape of what he's gonna look like somewhere in this range and then from there um, what I'll do from here is that I'll I'll try to light it in a way I always go in here and I'll try to light it in a way where you're not seeing every single muscle but you're getting some kind of hints of it Mm -hmm. like that okay so you just quickly scribble it out like this and and you just kind of shoot out like that so here from here I'll go in and I'll tighten this up like that just kind of Kind of hint at it, and then you can go ahead and you can break out in some areas like this, and break out a little bit, and just kind of show that this character has, you know, he has muscles, but you don't have to draw every single one of them. Mm-hmm. I'll use this one. Yeah, areas of shadow sometimes tell you way more. This yeah, like putting a line everywhere will do. Yeah, it's it's this is where I like to, to show it to like like whenever you're drawing an, an eyeball, right? You draw an eyeball like this, right? Okay, so that's basically it. Uh or or not eyeball, like in like the eye, the, the outside of the eye, and then the, the eyeballs right right here. Okay. What I like to do is instead of drawing that, what I'll do is I I'll do I will leave a little bit of space down here open, okay? Mm-hmm. And just kind of stop like right around there and just leave this area blank. Like no one, no one you don't have to you don't have to draw those lines. Just leave it open. Mm-hmm. Because you what you're doing is you it's it's almost like okay, when you have a, a round object like this and then you have a light source come coming on the, the object like this, right? <clears throat> Obviously, the shading at the bottom of the object is going to be darker, like this. And then the lighting or the, the line weight, as it gets closer to the object, or closer to the, the light source, it's going to get brighter. So it's going to go thinner. Okay, so you want to leave a little space, like a little a little tiny opening here, just to show that you know, it's, the line is tapering towards the light. Okay, So... Well, this is why why I do this. It's 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 very much like that. So I just leave this little gap right here, just kind of show like this is the brightest, hottest spot on on the eye because the eye is going to have like some kind of shadow here, like this. Um, it's going to be bright here, and then it's going to be have maybe some sh- some shading underneath it. So now you have an object here. I'll do it in red so you guys can see. So now you have like an object that has like a shape like this. <clears throat> And since it's darker at the bottom here, as I drop everything off, off my art table, um, <laughs> so it's kind of it's kind of uh, it's darker here at the bottom and it's brighter here at the top, but it's also connecting with this uh, this other object. So where the, the two objects connect, you're going to leave a little bright spot like right in this area right here. So it's it's like a little tiny little trick I like to do. It to me it helps 
the reader, the visual reader, the audience who's reading my art, who's looking at it and, and capturing the mood and, and, and everything, um, it, it just helps with just telling a, a little bit of a tiny little story. Like, say, I could do it right here on the back of this, the Hulk's neck, right? So, so you have the Hulk here and you're doing this. You can just stop right here and just tie, leave this leave this gap right here. Just tie, leave this tiny little gap right here. You know, you don't have to connect the line right. Just kind of leave it mm -hmm. and just just let it breathe. You know, just let it do do its thing. You know, it's like little tricks like that. You know, you can if you want to. You can go ahead and you can do you can do that too. But my personal feeling, my style, I like to let things breathe a little bit. Um, uh, like here, like here in his nose, I didn't connect the nose. I let let I'm letting it breathe a little bit. You know, you know, I don't want his nose to be too. I don't have to, you don't have to have every single line, you know, connecting every everything else. You want to draw a line, leave a gap, and draw, draw another line. So it's kind of, that's that style or that form of thinking, or sorry, my brain. Like you draw a line, leave a gap, and then draw another line here. So um, that style of thinking very much help. Uh, it, it it lends itself to the shading side of things. Also, like you don't want to, you don't have to draw every single muscle and shade every single muscle. You just have to indicate there's there's this oh there's a muscle group here and then there's another muscle group over here kind of like that you know and just you know and then when you actually have all the shot the shadows and stuff like it it helps too because it makes it gives it it makes it dynamic you know you have this character here with his muscles and he's doing all this cool stuff here blah, 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 you know the Hulk uh, what he's doing you know so you know it just helps with just bringing this this uh this realism and this uh dynamic type of feel to, to the character on the page so absolutely yeah i think there someone asked in here while you were doing this um they, they asked if you think that tracing other people's work is a great way to learn Ooh, that's a good question. I think that there's there's some stuff here that you're doing that I think that you bring over from some mm -hmm. of the art that you've described you liking. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a good question. When I was, uh, I studied fine arts in college. So um, when I, uh, I, I studied how to paint like Michelangelo and Salvador D Dali and these guys, okay? So I was very much into you know, the Renaissance art, um, um, pop art, I was into stuff like that, you know. Um, so I, I learned how to become this, this, this graphic, old school graphic artist type of type of thing. Um, and one thing they would stress to me is don't copy, they be original, try to be as original as possible. So I was constantly programming my brain into trying to be as original as possible and try to come up with the, the most unique art thing I can come up with because that's that's art. Art is expressing who you are on the inside. So be original, be you, show who you are, show you, show yourself. Um, but when you're gonna, if you're gonna take that energy and you're gonna transition it into a specific direction, which meaning comics, you're gonna transition it into that specific direction. To start from scratch and try to be original in that direction is going to be hard because there are specific ways you want to you want to uh, portray characters, specific way you want to portray lighting, specific way you want to portray rendering. Uh, you want to be able to, to portray these things in specific ways. And it's really hard to suddenly come out of the blue and just be as unique as possible and kind of just develop that thing. So I would say copy first at first. Mm -hmm. At first, find two, three, seven, fifteen artists that you really <laughs> like, and copy all of them. Just look at all their art and say, okay, this, this, I like how this person draws their eyeballs. Oh, I love how they they draw their hairstyle. I like how they draw jackets. I like how they draw this character flying through a wall. I like how you know they draw their females. I like how mm -hmm. they draw eyeballs. I, I all these different things. Just copy it, all right? Mm -hmm. and so I would say to go in that direction at first, okay? But you're not going to going in that direction and you're not going to stick to it. Go into that direction so you can learn. That is your school. That is your classroom right there. 
you're cloud you're copying other styles that you're study that you 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 you're, you're learning from and you're trying to learn how this artist does this and does that yeah and, and why you, and why and then once you get a, a good sense of it then you can branch off and start to introduce who you truly are as a as a person not just as an artist but as a person mm -hmm. you introduce who you are as a person into this style into this art this, this new direction that you're, you're you're developing and in time after four, five, six, seven, could, could take 10 years, depending on the person, uh, after a certain time uh, of you practice, I've seen it as short as two years. Um, but in time, you're gonna just branch off and it'll you will start to develop your own style. Next thing you know, you're like, this is the type of artist who I am, but you've, been, but you've learned from all these people how to do certain things, how to storytell, how to, how to render, how to draw eyeballs, how to do all these things. And then you're like, okay, now I, I get it. Now I'm going to do me. And kind of like that. You know, mm -hmm. so that's what I would say. And the reason I say to that is because comics is very unique. At the same time, it's, it's, it's like, it's the bread box for like so many different directions you can go in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's my two cents and that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> that was a full dollar. That was, that was a dissertation on this one. It was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I guess at this point, do you want to switch over to doing a new character? I uh, sure. I'm sure. See, we, we talked about who was it earlier? There was a, there's a female character you talked about. I did. Uh, I think so. When we were first brainstorming. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know who we had in there. Who was I talking about? <laughs> um do you, do you want to do um for the the course you did a uh, captain marvel captain marvel i maybe uh, thor <laughs> sure yeah hit it, it would, whatever, know, whatever you feel comfortable with it's early in the day, <laughs> it's like, in the day. yeah it's it's up to you which one feels best um okay. while you figure it out i uh, okay. push pencils around i'm gonna answer a couple questions here okay uh, one person had asked, uh, are storyboards and compositions different from manga and Marvel comics? Um, they asked, uh, this Marvel course will help me to create manga. Well, some things are different, um, especially if a person is making manga in the actual native language, the, the panels would be reversed in order um, to an English speaker um, because of the way the language flows. Um, but other than that, there's a lot of similarities, especially in this day and age. Comics have taken a lot from manga and anime, and I think it's really um, taken a lot of that like bombastic and energy of that. I think that's actually exemplified in a lot of Ryan's work. Mm -hmm. I think you you definitely love your anime. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh yes! I love it! I love it! Um, that's something that when I first saw anime, I was. I was, young. I was really young. I remember watching it. It it, it, it was called it was Transor Z, mm, uh, mm. a classic, <laughs> a classic. Man. Yeah, but I used to watch it. I grew up in the Caribbean, so I used to watch it. Uh, I'm from Saint Croix. Everyone, there. big up Saint Saint Croix. Um, um, I used to um, watch it in Saint Croix, but in Spanish because we would mm -hmm. get from Puerto Rico. It was like a Puerto Rico channel that would come in so i'm watching and they would say messenger and they would say that <laughs> and i'm like oh this is cool and i'm watching this as a kid so um this was back in the day when we had like antennas and we had to go out to like turn the signal <laughs> turn mm -hmm. it to get the signal you know so this is I'm sure my age, but it's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the the anime influence is strong. Knowing yeah. that it came from Mazinger Z, though, that's that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, and I used to watch that. I used to watch Macross back in the day, and then eventually it tried transition. I think what 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 really sucked me into it was when I saw Akira. Mm -hmm. um, so Akira did it for me, and then I then I saw um, um, Ninja Scroll. And then mm -hmm. I saw uh, Blood, the Last Vampire, and then Classic. I saw uh, uh, Vampire Hunter D. Oh, so many, of them. yeah, so many. Yeah, you know, I think like, you you mentioned Helsing. I think was a big one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was back in the day. This was man. I was. Ah, it was it was fun back back then watching it. So, and one of the coolest things is like after you've been seeing it for so long and you get to actually to meet 
uh, the guys who actually created this stuff and hang out with them and go to dinner with them. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't believe I'm here sitting. Yeah. <laughs> Mind blowing. This is amazing. So, with you getting to meet those people who were so influential for you, did you find yeah. anything that was um, like a, any, something that was a shared mentality between you and them that you think it takes to be this kind of energetic creator of art? Um, Dealing with these like iconic characters? Well, when we were, when I, when I met him, we weren't like talking, you know, it was just like two people, you know, just two people in, interacting. And so it was fun. It, it was cool just to get away from the whole art world. We actually did talk a little bit about art a little bit. Cause I remember drawing, uh, having, um, I met, um, uh, I remember drawing, um, I had him draw, draw, draw some some characters for me, and we actually drew together. So he mm. was drawing, and I'm drawing, and we're like drawing together on the same page. So to, it was that was kind of fun. But the, I mean, just that the interaction side of things, the the part, the the side you get to rub elbows with these these guys, and um, just just meet them and just be human. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, that's that's more valuable than being a fanboy and. Uh, to me it's just being human with them and just i mean they're, they're human too <laughs> yeah so yeah so you're saying you're saying that that's how people should talk to you when they see you at comic yeah Lines. yes talk to, to me i'm human don't <laughs> i've had it before but I, I i i'm human just i'm normal i'm approachable i've met, <laughs> met other celebrities or whoever that's approachable and you can have great conversations with them and you know just like this and that whatever and they're they're just cool i i i think i'm cool i, I you know, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't no, treat, i agree don't treat me like oh you're some god or something yeah i mean don't get me wrong you, the the first time we met you bullied you me because you thought i was gonna have candy for lunch but <laughs> other than that it's cool you're, you're fine yeah 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm normal uh I'm normal dude. When, when you're getting to take on these different these characters who everyone knows um mm-hmm or these like iconic characters people have expectations about yep. um how do you kind of balance kind of staying true to what those characters have been in the past while still adding your own touch to those um fundamentals okay to me um once i have you once you you understand your fundamentals everything else after that is just the sprinkles mm. it's just it's a layer of finesse a layer of style on top of the fundamentals i mean the hulk is the hulk he's he doesn't change he's just how how are you going to once you lay down the fundamentals of the hulk now how are you gonna how are you gonna make that look a little bit more exciting how are you gonna make make it more your style but mm-hmm. the fundamentals are there it's locked in place you know that's kind of that's one thing I, I i really want to stress and i would say you want to do because i remember be, being told um, when I first came into the industry by uh, Jim Lee and a couple of the people, they were like, you know, consistency is the key. You want to be able to be consistent with a character. You're drawing a char- the, the char- character 40 times in one comic book. You want to hit it all 40 times. Mm-hmm. So you have to be consistent. And the only way to be consistent is to l- understand and lock in your fundamentals. So if you, if you know how to draw a hand, it's the same hand. The hand doesn't change. It's the same hand, but you're drawing it at different angles. It's the same thing. Same if you have a primitive object like this. It just might forget about all the graphics on there. It, it's a shape. That shape doesn't change. It's the same shape. You're going to draw it 40 times, but at different angles, different lighting effects, uh, different line weights, different line styles. But it's the same object at different things. So that's that's what I would say. That's what I would say about that. So just lock that in and understand it. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that a person was asking earlier about how you kind of keep a face consistent from panel to panel. Yeah. Uh, I think you you already addressed it with that one. It's having consistency and always relying on those fundamentals. Yes. Looking at the face that you're that you're doing right now, mm-hmm. there are some core elements of what you're drawing. Yep. That are always going to be there. You break them down into those simple shapes. Yep. Uh, yes. What would you say are like the defining characteristics for 
this Secret Wars Thor? Um, see, see, see that one, one more time. The, the last part of your question. Yeah. So, like, what? looking at Thor here, what uh-huh. would you say are the fundamentals, like the things that always have to be there, and that you would want to hit from panel to panel for okay. her? Okay. So, like I said before, um, <clears throat> once you lock in the eyes and you, you establish where the nose is going to go, you create this triangular sh- pat- pattern here, and then you, if you repeat it again for the mouth, and you repeat it again for the for the chin once you have that you just you understand you know the air is going to be somewhere in here so you just basically lock that in and then from here you know the neck is going to be somewhere around here so once i have that down and then then, and the the other thing other than that is i try to establish okay where does the hairline is so in my head i'm i don't typically draw this but i'm thinking this i'm thinking okay where's that hair hair hairline because a hairline is key because it's going to tell me where this this part goes up and then it breaks off and starts to, 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 to go in this direction or maybe you can round, round it out like this. And why is my alarm going off? <laughs> you have so, something real important for a <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So that's basically it. So once I have that, I understand it. I'm like, okay, I get it. Now my framework is there. Now this is that fundamentals I was just, just talking about. Once you understand that, you, all I'm drawing, all I'm doing is redrawing that at different angles. Mm-hmm. And that's how I keep that character looking the same way every single time. Any page, any panel, I can draw it big, I can draw it teeny tiny. I could just keep it all in that same. Just lock that in, and you and you get it. And then from here, it's just that's why this is why I do things in red because it I'm doing all of this in my thinking stages, but I'm doing a little bit more specific for you guys to see, but typically I'll just do something like this and I'm ready to go. I'm ready. I'm ready to like, I'll just do a little bit darker so you can see. Uh, I'll I'll probably do something like that. And okay. Now I'm ready to go from here. I can go straight in and start drawing the eyeballs and nose and mouth and then blah, blah, blah. Then next, you know, it, it turns into that character. And then because this, you can turn this into anyone. You can turn this into a black widow. You can mm-hmm. turn this into whoever, you know. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But the fun are there. Um, yeah. speaking of fundamentals, are, is there anything that you wish that you had addressed earlier in learning how to draw? Um, it's okay to say that no, you you hit the ground running and you nailed it in the first try. No, Perfect. I didn't. I didn't learn. <laughs> I, didn't, I wish I had some work, some of my older work, so I can show you guys how how bad I was. <laughs> I was pretty bad, please. <laughs> um, because <laughs> uh, I I do have it. I was looking at my garage and I was like, oh, I still have this stuff, you know. So, um, but it's um it. There are. There was a time I struggled because I, like I said, I came from the fine arts world. I mm-hmm. did airbrushing. I did, I did paintings. I did wall murals. I was that type of artist. I was. I was like designing T-shirts and airbrushing on hats, and you know, it's like little things like that. You know, just trying to figure it out. So I was trying to do a little bit of everything, trying to figure it out. And then once I saw comics, I decided I'm going to take all of that. And then would funnel it towards comic books, and it was hard. It was hard. I tried penciling. I tried to 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 uh, to, to cross hatch like how I saw uh, other artists was cross hatching. I tried inking, and it was a struggle. Um, it took me, but I figured it out. It took me about six months of. Mm-hmm putting a laser focus on this. And I'm talking about six so- solid six months of me um, just um, blocking out the entire world. All I did was sit in front of my art table, just like this, with a little black and white TV. And I remember I used to watch- uh, Not Zinger C. Well, well <laughs> I, I remember I used to watch George Jefferson and, <laughs> nice. and the, the Price is Right. <laughs> And like a whole bunch of the, you know, just like normal TV, TV stuff, just playing in the background. But I'm really watching it. It's just playing in the back background. So, and eventually it got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm sick of watching TV. I want to hear something. So I would play like a movie in the background and I'm hearing the movie instead of watching it. So by listening to the audio of it, listen to the, the, the tracks, the, the, listen to everything, I'm building this, this 
this vision in my head and I'm, I'm channeling it through my hands and my pencil and I'm putting it on paper. So I'm building, mm -hmm. this, I'm building this library of this visual and I'll play like a movie over and over and over. I've watched aliens. I've listened to aliens <laughs> hundreds of times. <laughs> so, you know, you know, 007, you know, you see any kind of movie that's like, just that, that, that puts that juice in my head. Mm -hmm. that's I'll, I'll pop it in and I'll just watch it. And I'll just have it. I'll not really watch it. But it'll play in the background, and I'm listening to it. Sometimes I'll just put in the movies, the, the scores. I'll I'll just put it on and just listen mm -hmm. to the soundtracks, um, and and it's just playing in the background, just just so I can build this in my head, and and to me it helps with just building the the world that I'm I'm putting on paper right here, you know. Yeah. So. So 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 this is this is how I I help to build my 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 mental library. Uh, of uh, whatever I'm working on um, and I'm trying to capture it and make it look cool. So yeah, for, for me, the one that I, I kept going back to and playing in the background and then I just picked up the soundtrack was Princess Mononoke. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just day in, day out, just hearing terrible things happen in that forest. Yeah. Oh, but man. it works. Yeah, I love it. Princess Mononoke is one of, one of the best. Um, is there any particular advice that you'd give to a person who's they say they finished this course, right? Mm -hmm. They've got all the knowledge on how to make comics and they're actually using that knowledge. Is there anything that you'd recommend for those people to try to, um, do to make themselves be a working artist? Like say they're having a hard time self-starting. Um, Well, like, the, probably the first thing I would say is um, be aware of your surroundings because life has a way of interfering. Mm. Life has a way of pulling you out of that zone um, and making you and, and distracting you. So you're focused and you're you're sitting here, you're just trying to draw and your cousin will call or something or your best friend will want to. Go, go grab some lunch or do something, whatever it is. Life has a ways, has ways of interfering. You have to find a way to block yourself out of that, pull yourself out of that and just try to stay focused on your craft. Um, because if you don't, you know, you're allowing someone else to define who you are, who, who your, who your identity is, who your, what, what your future is. Um, so for me, I tried my best not, for that to happen this is this is a this is a true true story i'll tell you guys this um and uh uh this happened years ago so it's already off my my uh my uh, my credit score so i'm not, not sure. <laughs> what, what is the story you're about to tell <laughs> hello, hello, hello what am i gonna say so basically um this is how this is how powerful my mind was back then when i before i got into the industry i Back then, I was living at an apartment complex, and I just moved in, and I had a roommate. And um, oh, sorry, the microphone is like, oh my god, I just want to grab it. Getting away from you? Yeah, it's getting away from me. All right, so um, so I, I so I I had the opportunity to to draw comics. It was there, but I had to move from my apartment to go to a different state and live over there and work as a comic book artist. So I went to the office at my um at my apartment complex and I spoke to some some lady behind the desk and I said, "Hey, um I know I just signed up. I I've been here for 6 months." But I have to break my lease because I'm getting ready to move to a different state. I have a new job. I'm going somewhere else. I'm going. I'm, I'm building my life and my career some somewhere else. I have to do this. Lady was like, "Oh, well, if you're going to do this, um, if you're going to break the lease, you have to pay off the balance of the lease immediately." I was like, "What?" She was like, "Well, I was like, what's the balance?" And then she showed me this list, and she was like, "It was like a couple thousand dollars." And I was like, I, I don't have that couple thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Lady, what, what am I gonna do do with this? And I'm like, so I'm thinking, do I stay here and keep paying this this money here, or do I go get my 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 job? Mm -hmm. 
So I looked at the lady, and the only thing I was thinking, honestly, this is this is true. The only thing that was going through my head was like, you're making how much you whatever you're making per hour, and you're gonna stop me from building my future and what I'm planning to do. It's not gonna happen. And that's that's what's going on in my head. Mm -hmm. And so I, but what came out of my mouth was like. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate this. Thank you. And I left. <laughs> I immediately went to my apartment and I went straight to my roommate. I said, pack your stuff. You were moving back to your, in your parents. I'm moving out of here. My roommate was like, okay, cool. It was like that. <laughs> it was that easy. <laughs> and then I then next, you know, we, what we did, we cleaned up the entire apartment. We packed, we packed everything. I put, I got a giant U-Haul. I took whatever I had to, to my parents' house. Um, um, I, 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 I cleaned up the entire part. I made sure the apartment was spotless. It was cleaning. I painted walls, everything, what I had to do. And then I jumped in my car or I jumped on a plane, I should say. And I left, I didn't tell the office anything. I just left. I'm like, I'm not letting these people stop me. I don't care who it is. They're not going to stop me. And I just left so they can do what, what they want with whatever they want to, to come after me. I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> It ended up showing up on my credit report. <laughs> oh. That's what I was talking about because it was the years. It, it, oh, they were like, "Oh, you're you're you owe this and you're blah blah blah." And I was like, "Ah, uh, yeah, but I have a great career now. I just built this thing. I'm like, I think that doesn't that doesn't bug bug me too much." Um, but uh, but nothing was going to stop me. I sold my car for seventy five dollars. That's how what? that's how determined I was to get out of the hole I was in to go build a future in comics. I, I think you could have gotten at least 80. Uh, maybe I could, <laughs> but I sold it for 75 bucks. Jeez. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> like, I'm not doing this. I'm not letting anybody, anything, not even this car stop me. I'm not doing this. I'm yeah. Like, no, here. I'm glad that that worked out yeah. to the place where we can be here talking about that today. Yeah. Um, Right now, again, for anyone who's not, aware um the thing that we're doing is a live stream in support of this proco marvel team up course um that is here to teach you comics teach you the way to make comics not just as like some little like sunday morning four panel kind of thing um real storytelling uh with dynamic compositions real solid purpose behind everything uh, teaching you the full process from writing to coloring so that you know that you can actually make comics um this stream that we're doing right now it will be available as a vod later um barring any crazy unforeseen circumstances on youtube's end or anything like that uh, but all live streams that we do are available as video on demand afterwards um right now that course that i was just mentioning is about to launch it launches next week uh, and up until the day that it actually launches it's on sale for 20 percent off um it's the best time to buy it we never have discounts that exceed what are available in those pre-sale discounts it's the absolute best time if you're on the fence about it it's if it's something that you can do now's the best time you'll only have to pay more for it later if you do it later that's at proco.com slash marvel there, there'll be some sort of link somewhere if you're watching this later on you don't have to go type that in yourself if you don't know how to type proco i understand it's a weird name blame stan's parents for it oh, um cool. yeah he's a cool guy he's a cool guy he should be here in this stream right now though yeah, stan, where are you? yeah. You yeah if, if you guys if you guys wish that stan was here please say something in the chat let him know bully him about it um uh, we do have just a couple other questions in here from yeah. people uh someone's asking how you, that you can build the mentality to enjoy the process um mm. they, they find themselves enjoying the finished product but they think to, they need to learn to avoid uh, the frustration and just enjoy the process. Do you have any any sort of advice for this? Um, okay. Um, we're, we're, to me, when I hear that, I'm thinking of what are the where are the where are the mental barriers? What's the what's blocking me from building this creative juice that's inside of me to, so I can just, you know, feed off of this. Um, to me, like I, like I said before, it, surroundings has a lot to do with it. 
um, I put up something, I'll put on my headphones and I'll block out the entire world and I'll put myself in that zone just so I can put a laser focus on what, what I'm doing. Um, there are times when um, I'll stop drawing at all and I'll just go, I'll do something else. I'll go for a hike. I'll go to the beach. I'll go to the zoo. I'll go for a walk. I'll do whatever. I'll just, just get away. Just go do something. There are times I used to go gardening, just like, okay, I'm done. I'm just going to go do some gardening and just, just do what I just spend time, you know, digging up, digging dirt just so I can get away from this, this, the art world a little bit, just so I can get my brain, I can reset my brain. Um, because it can get to the point where there's like an overspill where you're, you're either producing too much or you're, you're at the point where you're just, there's a mental block. You just can't connect with anything and you, you're just kind of frozen. Like, Oh, I can't, I can't think of anything. I, there's nothing creative coming out of me. I, I, I'm looking at this page for three hours and it's still a blank page. All these things are possible. You know, it can happen. Um, so you, to me, you have to find it. Everyone's different, but mm -hmm. I, 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 for me as an artist, as a human, as an in, individual, these are the things I do. Uh, it doesn't mean that's something you have to do. You have to find what makes you creative, what, who you are, what pulls you out of your world. But I do know these barriers do exist and they and if it can attack me it can attack you mm -hmm. so it, it it's it's around and so you just have to find a way to maneuver the minefield um and just get away from it you know um I, i've given this advice to 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 many students i've given this advice to 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 young people that, you know um this one guy i knew I, I i saw he was um um i saw he was he was complaining about it on twitter and and I took took a, a step to cut to contact that person and actually get on a, on a, a a live stream call with that hmm. person and I spoke to him about that and I and that's the first and only time I've ever done it and I'm not gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't tweet at him about it. But I I tried to connect with him and just to get him because I knew like if I can reach this guy and just see because I could see it through his, the messages he was saying he's 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 blocked. He's, he's, it's like, he's, there's something stopping him from doing what he wants to do, but he wants to do it and he just can't get there. So I took that step and I connected with him and I tried to talk to him, um, and pull him out of that. And uh, I hope it works, you know, just <laughs> give him some advice, you know, cause I've been there, you know? Yeah. The, during the course, I think that that's one of the questions that we made sure to ask everyone who was coming through. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you'd mentioned some of those things. I think you talked about the gardening thing in there. Yeah. Um, we, we also had, uh, so CB Sabolsky from our movie. Really? Uh, one of the things that he talked about was that he took up bird watching. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> I think yeah. there's, it's, it's important to have other hobbies. Um, I yeah. think there are big companies and everything who they've kind of found mm -hmm. that one of the things that they make sure to do in their hiring process is to hire people who have other hobbies that aren't just like for doing comics. If your only mm -hmm. hobby was watching comic movies or reading comics, mm -hmm. they might not go for that. They want to have you to be able to de-stress from those things with something else. Yeah. The worst that happened to me was um, a couple of years ago, I would say probably um, 15 years ago, somewhere in that mm -hmm. range. I was so fried that I just had to leave the country. I jumped on a plane and I went to the Caribbean, uh, went back home because that's where I'm from. And I told us I'm just going to sit on the beach and do nothing <laughs> in the Caribbean. And it took three days of me sitting on the beach because my brain was just like kind of fried like that. It took about three days of me just sitting there um, doing absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. for my brain to, to 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 get back into gear and i'm like okay i can pick up a pencil and i can i'm draw i can draw now you know so it can happen you know where you just have this mental block uh, i've seen it happen, happen to me happen to many people i know um so mm -hmm. yeah to everybody um yes. so there's a question from way earlier in the stream and i feel like i know where the answer is going to go for this one but i'm going to mm -hmm. make sure that i ask it because they asked it so many times in the chat no. here. 
Um, is it possible to draw a picture like you in one year? Draw a picture like me? What do you mean, draw a picture like me? I think they're saying to get to your skill level. I'll get to my skill level year, from in zero. One year? To Absolutely. Injury. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I'm not even gonna lie. It is because yeah. I've seen I've seen people go from uh, um, just it. it this okay. I have I can ask you this in multiple ways, so I'm gonna to try to put all this in one little bucket. Um, the reason why I say it's possible is because I've seen it. Um, there's a uh, there's a friend of mine that I I don't, know, I don't know if I should mention his name or not, but should I should I mention his name? I don't know. No, get him if you if you're uh, gonna say something bad, drag him. If you're gonna say no, something good, like, compliment this is him. Good. This is it's not good. bad. It's good. Uh, yeah, that's his, good. His name is Sean Galloway. Um, uh, when I first met him, um, his, his art skills was okay. Mm -hmm. He wasn't like that good. He was, he needed a lot of work. And I remember sitting down with him all the time. We would sit down and just draw together, draw together, draw together. And I would push him and push him and push him and push him. And I remember telling, telling him, you know, I, cause I saw that he had like, if the, in the direction he was going and, and how, polished his he, he he can get if he tweaked this or tweak that and he focused on this and focused on that and he put a laser focus on it and just kept working at it he will he can be one of the the, the 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 top artists in this industry within two years i told him within two years in a year he was already there it took him about a year of nice. just focusing and just put, he was there he was literally there in about i was looking at his work and i'm like man this guy's like, compared to where he was a year ago to what he's doing today and he's just he just skyrocketed you know so if he can do it i know other people can do it we're all human we all have have these capabilities we all have we all every single one of us everyone listening to my voice everyone watching <laughs> Even though you've never picked up a pencil before and you've never drawn and you've never thought about building an art career, you can do this. I know you can. And here's why. It's because we are all, all of us, every single person born on this planet, we're all born with this creative seed inside of us, okay? We all have this artistic talent. I call, I call it artistic talent, I, but let's just say put a name it creative seed just to be put everyone on the same level mm -hmm. what we do with it determines what comes out of it who we are in the future and how can i how do i prove that we are we all are creative take a baby play some music what's the baby gonna do they're gonna dance okay baby they're gonna dance that's them trying to express trying to get something out like mm -hmm. oh, they're feeling it they've never done this before but they're jumping up and down they're, they're doing something okay that's the the core of it that's like the most simplest way to explain it and and what you do with it from there on is basically your surroundings you know your parents are around you your friends are who around who are this the life where, where where did life take you as you're growing up as you're learning and you're doing things if you plug yourself in as an artist you from from the time you're younger you're going to be way better that by the time you're in your early 20s and mm -hmm. if you're just starting off in your 20s and then you're trying to build build something so it's really up to your surroundings plug yourselves into like-minded folks plug yourselves into the area where you're surrounded by other people who's going to push you who's going to help you who's going to make you grow who's not going to pull pull you down who's not going to take you away from being an artist who's not going to try to tell you stop drawing and go 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 uh you know whatever go do something go work at a regular store or something like that. if you really want to focus on art and you really want to do this pursue it go get it no one's going to go get this for you no one's going to going to uh hand it to you you have to literally get up and go get this that's how you have to do it um so um I hope that's mo motivation enough for you guys. Yeah. Uh, there's other ways I can explain, but if I do, I, I'm going to be talking for another 20 minutes on this. So no, I, I, can talk, I can talk a little bit about this. So. Oh, this is great. Um, th there, there's a, a couple questions that people had asked that I think we can kind of hit in one thing here. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so a person was asking the first question, um, how important was it to have an artist mentor to guide you and other artists when you started your career? Mm -hmm. They feel that they don't really have that kind of studio environment anymore. Uh, and then just add on to that one. Who do you recommend from in the industry to study from? Mm -hmm. Because I do kind of agree. There's a little bit less of the mentorship. There are some routes to get that. But if they're just at home, they can't hang out with Jim Lee, you know, like, uh, what, who do you think that they should look to, to study from? Well, I, I, I when I was, when I was transitioning from a fine art, as far as your comment, I wasn't hanging out with Jim Lee either, but exactly. I was, what I was learning from him, I would look at his work and I would try to copy what I'm seeing. Like, Oh, I see. I like how he's drawing his hands. I love his angles. I like his rendering style and I would try to copy that. Um, so you don't have to physically be in the room with them. Um, it really depends on, on your, your, your mental abilities, you know, uh, your, your surroundings, you know, how, how well can you plug yourself into, um, certain venues, you know, um, um, probably this it's, it's, I would say it's going to be different from for everyone because everyone's different. Um, the the path and a route to being a, an artist is going to be different from everyone. It's not going to be the same. Um, so the things I tell you, it's basically the core of it. And from there, you do with it as you want, as you will. You know, you can, uh, you can apply 10, 10% of it. You can apply, you know, 100% of this. You know, whatever you want to do is how you're going to build, build yourself. Um, it's really up to you because um, we're all different. I, I don't know where you're you're at in life. I don't know where your head is at. I don't know what surrounds you. I, I don't know where, where, where are your barriers. Do you have a lot of barriers or you just have one or two? You know, what what is it? You know, so it really depends on the individual and what do you want to do in the future mm -hmm. and how determined you are to get it. Like you saw my example. I would not let that lady sitting behind that desk telling me I had to pay a couple of thousand dollars to break a lease, stop me from getting where I wanted to. That's how determined I was. Other people would have would have allowed it. They would have said, mm, well, maybe I can negotiate. Maybe I can pay it off. Oh, maybe I can do this. I'm like, I don't have the money. I'm out. I'm gone. I'm not just left. Like, I, I don't care. I did not care. I, this company, this apartment complex is not going to determine my future forget that that's just something i just i refuse to do so but that's just me uh, but someone else might have a completely different you know take on it so i don't know yeah. no and, and i think also like if you're if you're craving some of that like direct mentorship that you think isn't there um mm -hmm. there are some avenues to get to do some of that there are times when you'll see people who are making comics especially in the indie space mm -hmm. who are like looking for a flatter for a job yes jump in do the thing like fighting fighting is one of the best ways to to enter into it you get direct contact direct feedback and you get to see that process yeah so yes exactly because uh you can flat for hours and hours and hours and you're you're learning and you don't even know you're learning you just mm -hmm. think yeah, i'm just flatting but you're literally learning how to because you're you're you're, you're going over this line work over and over and over and you're seeing it so you're like you're, you're putting us in this mental library in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. And then all you have to do is just execute at, at some point, you know? Yeah. And everyone's always looking for a flatter. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a couple questions where someone was asking, do you ever just straight up abandon a drawing and start over? Or oh, do you yeah. just what you already did to improve it? Oh yeah. I've done that. Um, where I've started drawing and, um, and you just kind of lose it. You lose the, the ability, not ability, just like the, the mindset to like, oh, man, I, I don't really, I'm not feeling this anymore. It's not, you know, and I just start over. <laughs> you know, I've done that many, many, many times. Um, um, but typically what I'll do is this. So let's say I'm drawing this piece and at some point I, um, I'm, I'm not feeling it anymore. It's not. I'm not, it's when I first started this, I had this my idea like, oh man, this is going to be good if I do it this way. And 20 minutes in, you're like, ah, I'm not, I don't feel like drawing anymore. You just want to just throw it, throw it to the side or something. Um, 
what I'll typically do is get up and walk away from my art. Sometimes it'll take five minutes. Sometimes it'll take 30 seconds. Sometimes it'll take half a day. Um, but I'll separate myself from the art and then I'll come back to it immediately. And when I immediately come back to it, because I know my fundamentals, I know what I'm doing. When I see it, I will instantly see all, all my mistakes, 100% of my mistakes. I will see where, where, where I'm lacking, where the things where I'm falling short. And I know, oh, I see it now. The eyeball was crooked. It was throwing me off. Oh, maybe if I add this over here, it'll, I'll, it'll make it better. And I'll just do it. I'll just go in and I'll just erase a, an entire area and just draw some something else in there. You know, uh, I remember learning this from my, my my sister. My sister was one of my first art teachers because she would draw all the time and she would show me how to do portraits and how to, you know, sh do shading. She she was the one who sh who, who sh taught me how to shade like 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 this with your fingers and you just you just smudge it like that. So I didn't notice until my sister showed this. Me. Mm. So I was doing all this stuff with, you know, um, and I would watch her draw an entire piece like this, don't like it, and erase it. And it just blow my mind. I'm like, ah, no. <laughs> it's coming out good. Why are you erasing it? But in her head, it wasn't right. It needed to be right. It needed to be, it needed to be correct. So that was her process was I'm going to erase it and start over. Mm -hmm. I would just... I wouldn't erase it completely because I believe everything is salvageable at some point. There are times I'm inking or I'm drawing something and I'll spill something on here and I'm like, oh man, did I just ruin this piece? But like, no, I'll find a way to, 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 to make it work because I like to work messy. Mm -hmm. To me, art is art can be clean or messy at the same time. So I'm like, oh, okay, it's a little bit, of, a little bit, too, maybe I can turn that mess into art. I'm like, yeah. Oh, Oh, how, how can I modify it and tweak it and make it look good? Because uh, you know, as I'm inking, I'm using black and I'm using white ink at the same time, so I can come back with white and I can do some tweaking and blah blah blah, blah, blah and I'll just turn it into turn the mess into art. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've I've done that in the past, you know. Um, so yeah, th that's just me. You know, I'm creative enough to, to to do it. Some people aren't. Some people might just say I'm not feeling it and just completely rip it and start over. That's okay too. I mean, yeah. That's what I do, you know? so, yeah. There's there's a guy um there's a guy here on YouTube who builds things out of like old trash and stuff. Uh, mm. And one of the things that he says when he gets something makes something a little too messy, um, he just always says free weathering. Yeah. And yeah, it's true. Like if you end up with some like nasty texture on there accidentally, mm -hmm. that, that's just more realism, baby. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I guess as one of the last things, we do have a couple more questions, but I, I do mm -hmm. want to kind of like go over a little bit more of what it was that was in your particular section of this course. Okay. Um, I promise you don't have to remember all the lessons or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but in your section, you you were one of the people who was going over penciling, um, mm -hmm. some design, um, and some sketching, the first like initial steps of drawing. Mm -hmm. Um. Is there anything you think that's like most important for people to try to remember or keep in mind when doing the initial pencils for a page? Okay. I'm like I said, I'm gonna repeat it again. Mm -hmm. Fundamentals, fundamentals, fun, fundamentals. <laughs> Trust me on this. Okay. That to me, I think that's gonna be the most important thing because that's where you're gonna develop con consistency. That's where um, you can, once you lay out, you, you establish your fundamentals, you can skin it with any character you want to. I can, I can do, I can doodle, I can doodle uh, a shape like this and say, okay, I want a character, you know, running like that with his hands coming this way, blah, blah, and I can turn that into, into any Marvel character that, that's out there. I can, mm -hmm. I can do that with it. Um, so, it doesn't matter who it is. Let's lock it into place. Okay, so that's what I would say is, is, is for that. And then from from there there on, uh, you do want to implement who you are as an artist into your work. Uh, I'm a messy artist, as you can see. I'm just kind of going all over the place. Um, um, there are some artists who are a lot cleaner than this. You know, I like to stay messy because this there's this energy that comes out of this. When I'm throwing my lines going like this. I'm capturing energy shooting in that direction. 
you know these these lines are not just there just to establish the shape of 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 the the, the character but the, it's there to establish um the form the energy the depth all that stuff you know so you want to capture all that um um uh, what was the question again if like i need to... just the, the the things that you think are most important for people to keep in mind okay and then from from like to me like i said the fundamentals and then from from there um um it, everything else after that is finesse. Hmm. Um, you, as you're drawing your comics, you want you want to be able to. A couple of things you want to think about too is like, say, like certain areas like this. You can leave this this area like that, or if you want it solid black, you want to you want to go through and mark X's in here to let mm -hmm. your inker know. Okay, these areas have to be solid black. You know, so you want to you can you can do that. Um, the use of your eraser is important as you can see i did some over here you can use your eraser to 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 scribble certain shapes like say you wanted to um create like some kind of lighting effect or something like that coming up coming here you can use your eraser like that to create that lighting effect uh there's so many different ways you can you can do this you know so um um i, I feel like there's a lot i can say oh yeah and I, and I don't know what to no, say. No, you, you don't have to say them all. I mean, you already did on camera during oh, yeah. the course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to pay for anything else. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else here. This is just a bit of taste. This is that sample in Sam's Club. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So just as a little bit of a breakdown of the things that are in this course, we've so we've got a bunch of different groups in here. Um, so we've we, like we actually go over inspiration for the artists who well, artists and inst other instructors. Not everyone in here is just just writing or even on the necessarily fully creative side. Um, then we, we go to writing the stories with Jim Zub, um, expressive pencils with Ryan Benjamin, uh, inking with Mark Morales, um, cinematography with Mike Hawthorne, page layout and panel composition with Aaron Connolly, characters with Ryan Benjamin himself, um, posing, acting, and performance with Aletha Martinez, um, the, another section on character demos, um, character design, uh, and making sure your characters are expressive with Sanford Green, environments, and some perspective talk with Danny Warren Johnson, um, coloring with Matt Wilson, and then uh, covers with Eric Gist, which is actually a really cool one. Covers, yeah. um, you, you get a lot of the knowledge that it takes to make a cover um, through a lot of the other lessons that are in here. But one of the things that he does is actually make one of those like fine art kind of covers that you'll see from him or Simone Bianchi, uh, where he's actually sitting there and doing one of his covers with oil paint, which is really cool to see. Uh, and then uh, one of the last things that's in that course right now is portfolio review. Mm. Uh, some things with CB Sabolski, where he's going to go over what it takes for port port portfolios, like you guys were asking about earlier. Um, we got to basically find out from him what they're looking for, what comics as a whole is looking for. Uh, and it was, it's a really good section. Yeah. Seaweed's probably, probably the best person to explain that. Honestly, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, he's, he's amazing. So, and he's the, he's the dude who has to look at yeah, so exactly. many of them. Exactly. So he knows. Um, so yeah, I think honestly, unless there's anything that you really want to make sure and hit here at the end of this to talk about the piece that you drew here, I think you've shown a bunch of good stuff here talking about spot blacks with the X's that you've marked. Yeah. Um, I think we're about good to just remind people they can save 20% off on this course right now <laughs> during the pre-sale window up until the course actually launches here this next week. Yeah. Uh, when that course launches is when that pre-sale window will actually end. It's the best time to get that course right now. Um, but even if you're watching this later and that pre-sale isn't there, it's good stuff. Pay the price. Come on in. Join us. It's it's some good comics book learning. Yes, sir. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm excited to be to to be an artist in this series. Um, I think this is going to be a game changer uh, when you guys see this. So um, and hopefully there'll there'll be even more of this coming out. So <laughs> we'll mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we'll have. Extension. We'll have a we'll have a bunch of um, free materials from this and the upcoming Comic Con that we'll be doing. Um, not necessarily stuff that's just in studio, but some other additional materials that you guys don't necessarily have to pay for. But they'll mm. be short, and you'll have to work really hard to get all the knowledge out of them. Um, 
if people are looking for you on social media, Ryan, that's not on ours, where can they find you? Um, probably the best place to, to get a hold of me is to Instagram. Um, if you go to at Ryan B N J M N, that's my handle for mm -hmm. anything, honestly. Um, so you can find me there. Um, Instagram is probably, probably the best way to get a hold of me. Um, I'd say email, but I hardly answer my email. <laughs> <laughs> Just Instagram me, DM me on Instagram. That's probably the best way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you guys are looking for Proko on any sort of social media stuff, we're Proko TV on most socials. Unless you're looking for Stan himself, he's there under his own name. We are on that brand new threads thing. Um, we'll see if that lives or dies or if it's good or bad. But if you're on it, we are too. Um, I want to give people one last little look here. at these Yeah. Th threads has been growing. Like I was watching my uh, followers sh sh shoot up like within 20 minutes when I mm -hmm. first created, I already had 500 fo followers and after an hour it shot up to like 2000 and then it just kept going. And I'm like, wow, this is moving like really fast. Mm -hmm. so, threads is like the way where you want to go. So yeah, there's some good energy over cool. there right now. Yeah. yeah it was good energy. Yeah. Um, Brian, thank you for being here. No, it's been a you. good time. Appreciate it. Thank you. I, well, this is what I do. <laughs> Guess what I'm going to do when I leave? You're going to go do this? I'm going to go back. I'm going to go find another art table. I'm going to keep drawing somewhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you have a good rest of your day. Um, to everyone else who's out there, enjoy this trailer one last time and then have a good rest of your day. Go make some art, okay? Do it. Yes. You don't need to be bitten by a spider to become a comic artist, but it does require specific knowledge and skills. Introducing Marvel's The Art of Storytelling, a new online course that will teach you the skills to make comics from start to finish.